Dog owners, unite. Are you ready to get to know your dog better? Welcome to America's Dog Whisperers with Mark German and Janice Wolf. This program will help make your good dog great and your great dog fabulous. Now, here's Mark and Janice. Good evening, dog lovers. My name is Mark German. I am America's Dog Whisperer. And I'm Janice Wolf, New Jersey's Dog Whisperer. And today we are broadcasting from almost Maryland. Uh, last week we're in Houston and we had a really fun time out there, fixed a lot of dogs with issues and hope that if you guys know anybody who loves dogs and wants to uh, help us out by becoming a whisperer, that you will contact us at njdogwhisperer at aol.com. So what we're going to do this evening is uh, field some questions from you all about your dogs, but before we get into that, Hi, everybody that's been here every week other than last week during Super Bowl. But we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to correct the bad behaviors in your dog. We're going to teach you about the four essentials to a stable dog. We're not going to uh, get into how to fix aggression if, if you have a dog like that. But most of us have dogs that have some issues that frustrate us, aggravate us. Basically, they piss us off. And that's not why you got the dog. The reason we're on here tonight is to try to get as many people notified that there is hope for your dog. You don't have to give dogs away. Briefly, I just want to touch on the four essentials that every dog needs. If we as dog owners only change four things that we've been doing, you will see a different dog. Those four things are leadership, walks, rules, and good nutrition. By, by breaking them down, leadership, people, people already know, they've seen enough TV shows to say, I know I need to be the pack leader. The problem is we don't know how to. Nobody is there to show us how or tell us how. There's not a book out there that tells you how to be a pack leader. It just tells you to be one. We're going to show you how to become a pack leader. By walking your dog, which is the second essential, that's going to provide leadership for your dog. By walking him properly not and for the right reason, you're going to show your dog that you're the leader. This isn't a harsh thing. This isn't a yelly thing. This is just not even speaking to your dog at all, and he will understand what we're doing. All we try to do is to get the human to change the way you've been thinking. As humans, we don't have time to exercise, the word exercise, our dogs. But we do have time to walk our dog across the street and back, or down to the mailbox and back. That's all a dog needs. You cannot out-exercise your own dog. So, and I can't rollerblade, and I can't ride a skateboard, So, but I can sure walk my dog. And the reason we walk a dog is not for exercise. The reason we walk a dog is to show the dog and to fulfill the dog's needs to roam to hunt for food. If you think about the canine species, they roam to hunt for food. They don't go out there playing frisbees and tennis balls. They roam to hunt for food. So by taking your dog for a short walk, bringing him home, letting him rest, and then feeding him, that's providing one of the needs for a dog. Your dog also has to have some rules in the house. I don't care, and Janice and I, we don't care if our multiple dogs sit or lay down. We just don't want them running out the door, jumping on people when they come in the house, barking on the back of the couch out the window. We don't want them doing those certain things. Our dogs can be at the door. They just can't go out the door, and that's what we teach you. That's the purpose of the rules. And then nutrition is the last essential. All dogs need the best food possible. If you remember the show Super Size Me, where the guy ate at McDonald's or one of the fast food restaurants, he couldn't even finish the test that they were doing. He was getting so sick from that. A lot of the foods out there is like McDonald's. Yeah, it's good for a couple of times, but overall, health-wise, nutrition can lead to, to bad behaviors. Bad nutrition can lead to bad behaviors. Good nutrition is just going to help your dog. In our book, we talk about those, that nutritional factor. We're not going to get on that tonight, but if you have a comment or a question about it, that's fine. We're here to help you all that's listening 
help your dog. So if you know if you don't have a dog, you can listen in, but you know somebody who has a dog with issues. And we're out to to find those people. We want to help their dog. We we don't want dogs being euthanized because he's a fearful dog. Okay, so now that we have the four essentials, let's talk a little bit about what some of the people's most common complaints and and irritations are. Somebody here said their dog irritates them. It's like he tries to annoy them. They don't really try to annoy us. What they're doing is what we're not. So what winds up happening, actually, is we think that the dog is trying to be bad and trying to irritate us, trying to piss us off, doing things to annoy us. Dogs don't think like that. Dogs act out of dominance and out of fear. So if a dog is doing something, let's say growling at another dog, growling at people, uh, peeing in your house, the reason he's doing that is not because he's got nothing better to do than annoy you. It's because you're not providing the leadership that he needs by setting the rules, taking him for the proper walk, and doing the things he needs as a dog. Therefore, he decides he's going to do it. Most dogs don't want to do this. Most people don't want to do this. If the average person could have someone paying for their mortgage, their car payment, and their insurance, and all their expenses, you would take that in a heartbeat. Well, that's what we're offering our dogs. We're offering them basically a free ride. The problem is that people think that dogs are doing things to annoy them. Dogs do things because they're trying to do what you are not. For instance, if a dog feels that you are not the leader, he will try to protect you. Therefore, he will growl or bark. If you scream and carry on when a dog is barking, you're just barking louder than they are. So that shows the dog that you're not stable. And when you're out of control and you're not the leader, the dog will take over. A good dog should take over. But it's our job as the, as the owners, as the pack leaders, to teach the dogs the rules of our house, the rules of life, as they happen, and not to get mad at them. The worst thing we can do is to get angry or frustrated with our dogs because then that causes us to emotionally be unstable. And dogs, as you know, most animals can sense fear, can sense anxiety, can sense frustration or anger. And if we're angry, we're not stable. That's why dogs will wind up and protect us or take over or pee in the house uh, when we're not doing that. So, um, Mark, um, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, most common complaints that people have other than the uh, the jumping, which we talked about last week. Uh, All right. Well, let me let me just back up a minute before we get into that. I want the audience to understand a little bit about how we think, how we we dog whisperers think. Now, I say we dog whisperers. Even though I'm America's dog whisperer, Janice is New Jersey's dog whisperer. We're traveling the country together to train people to become dog whisperers. There can be more than one dog whisperer in this country because there's enough dogs for more people to help. There's a show on TV, you all are familiar